Hello everyone, Salaamu Alaikum. Today we will be discussing about the mandibular movements. There are three determinants of the mandibular movements. First one is the condylar guidance, then incisal guidance and the neuromuscular factors. What is the condylar guidance? This is our articular eminence and this is our condyle, mandibular condyle. When uh, the mandibular condyle moves along the slope of the glenoid fossa, then that is the, the slope of the glenoid fossa or the pathway of the glenoid fossa determines the movement of the mandible. It is known as the mandibular guidance. That is the condylar guidance. That is the condyle is being guided by the surface or the pathway of the glenoid fossa. When we see the view in the undersurface, when it is viewed from the undersurface, the articular eminence is thicker in the medial portion, thus the condylar movement is steeper in the medial trussive pathway than in the straight protrusive pathway. The difference between them is known as the fissures angle, which ranges from 5 to 10 degree, that is the, uh, there is the condylar guidance and the no working side during the lateral trussive will be 5 to 10 degree greater than that of the condylar guidance during the straight protrusive. That is when they move laterally it will be 5 to 10 degrees greater than when they when the mandible is moved forward. Thus this is the condylar guidance. I hope condylar guidance is clear right now. Now comes to coming to the incisal guidance. Incisal guidance. Incisal guidance is the uh, the the influence of the contacting surface of the mandible, the maxillar, anterior teeth during the mandibular movement is known as the incisal guidance. The lingual portion of the upper anteriors. This is the upper anterior. This is the lower anteriors. Okay. So the lingual portion of the upper anteriors determines the pathway of the lower anteriors. That is, when the mandible is moved forward, the up lower anterior. The lower anterior moves along the slope or along the pathway of the lingual surfaces of the upper anteriors before it coming to before coming to H to H contact, which is known as the incisal guidance. And the angle formed in the long axis bet, uh, and, and the angle formed in the horizontal plane when the line is drawn from the sagittal plane between the incisal edges of the maxilla and the mandibular central incisor, it is known as the incisal guide angle which is totally the incisal guidance is absent in the completely edentulous patients. Thank you.